Today we're going to be learning about pie charts. First, let's quickly talk about what pie charts are. A pie chart is a graphical representation of data using a circle that's been divided into slices of different sizes to show the fraction that each category or group represents out of the total data set. When drawing a pie chart, we need to follow certain rules. So let's quickly have a look at an example of a pie chart over here. So here we've got a pie chart showing us the percentages or the fraction of a class that has dogs, cats, and fish. Okay, so it says that 55% of a class has dogs, 25% of the class has cats, and 20% of the class has fish. Okay, so now let's quickly have a look at the rules that we need to follow while we are drawing a pie chart. The first thing you always have to make sure you do with any kind of graph and pie charts included is you have to make sure you've got a title saying what this graph or chart is about. The next thing you need to do when you're drawing a pie chart is you need to make sure that you fill in all the percentages for all the different slices. Then you also need to label the different slices. Now this can be done in two ways depending on how you are doing your pie chart. If you're doing it in black and white like this then you can just label them by writing the name inside the slice. Otherwise if you're using color like this you can choose to do a key instead where you show on the side what each color represents. So that's entirely up to you. When a pie chart is being printed then it's depending on the number of slices that are being used, if the pie chart is being printed in black and white, then doing it like this will work if there's only three slices or three colors. But if you have more than that, it becomes more difficult to differentiate between different shades of gray. So then it's preferable to do it rather like this. But if you are able to look at it in color, then this is obviously a nicer way of presenting your pie chart. So it's up to you how you want to do it when you are having to draw a pie chart, but it can be presented to you in different ways, in color or in black and white like this, or just plain like this where you have the labels written inside the slices. Okay, so now let's have a look at the first example that we're going to be doing on pie charts. In this example, it says, a group of 80 people was asked what their favorite fruit is. The results are listed in the table below. Calculate the percentages for each fruit, as well as the angles you will need for drawing a pie chart to represent the data. Okay, so when you draw a pie chart, you need to fill in the percentage for each of the different categories. So that's why you're gonna have to work out the percentages here. But you also need to know what angle to use when you're drawing the pie chart. So it's important to know how to do that. So I'm going to quickly show you how we do this. So we have already learned about working out percentages. So we know that the total number of people in the group was 80. They told us that over there. So to work out a percentage, we take the number divided by the total. So that'll be 20 over 50 or 20 over 80. And we multiply that by 100. And that will give us a percentage. So when we work this out, it'll give us 25%. So to work out the percentage for the apples, we're going to take the number divided by the total. So it's 20 divided by 80 and multiply by 100 to get a percentage. And the reason we multiply by 100 is because percentage is an amount out of 100. So now to work out the angle, remember that all the way around a point, it is 360 degrees. So your angle is an amount out of 360. So we're going to start off the same as we did for working out a percentage. We also take the number over the total. So it's going to be 20 over 80. But now we're not going to multiply by 100 because that'll give us a percentage. We want to work out the angle, which is an amount out of 360. So we're going to multiply by 360 and that will give us an angle, which in this case is 90 degrees. Okay, so that's what you're going to be doing for all the rest of these. I'm going to give you two minutes to work out the rest of these percentages and angles.
Okay, so let's take a look at what your graph or what your table should look like. So over here, when you fill in all of these, you should end up with 5% for pineapple, 35% for banana, 10% for nectarines, 10% for peaches, 15% for oranges, and then your angles, you should have got 18 degrees for pineapple, 126 degrees for, ban for bananas, 36 degrees for nectarines, 36 degrees for peaches as well, and 54 degrees for oranges. So that's what you should have got for your table. Now you're going to take that information and you're going to draw a pie chart. Okay, so I'm going to start you off so you know how to do it and then you are going to finish it for yourselves. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at how you would start this. If you've got the worksheet, that you, then you'll have a circle that you can do it on. Otherwise, you can just draw a circle. You can use a compass to draw a circle or you can just draw a circle around something round as well, around a bowl or something like that. Okay, so over here, I have got my circle that I'm going to be using. I've also got my center dot, which if you do use a compass to do your circle, then you will get the dot from that compass. Otherwise, you'll just have to find the, the center as well as you can. Right, so now I'm going to be using a ruler and I'm just going to draw a starting line from the center to the edge of the circle like that. Okay, so that's going to be the line that I'm going to use and work from as I do the slices of my pie chart. So now let's quickly have a look at what the first slice is going to be. So over here, the first slice for apple was 25% and it is 90 degrees. So now I'm going to take my protractor, I'm going to put the center on the center dot of my circle and line this up on that line that I made. And I'm going to mark off 90 degrees. From here, 90 degrees is over there. And then I'm going to go and draw a line from the center lined up with that point over there. Like that. And that is my first slice. Then the next slice, I would take this and I would line it up on here. Now with the next line that I've drawn. And then I would do the next angle from there. So if the next angle in this case is 18 degrees, I'm now going to be measuring 18 degrees from this line over here. So 18 degrees is going to be here's 10, there's 20, 18 is over there. Okay, so I'm going to go and draw my line over here. So this is my 18 degree angle like that. Okay, so that is what you should get for your first two slices. Now, the order that you do the slices in isn't really that important. Obviously, it is logical to do it from the top down as you work down the uh, table, but in a pie chart, it doesn't really matter what order you do the slices, so long as the slices are the correct size for the different categories. Okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes to complete this pie chart.
Okay, so let's take a look at what your graph should look like. So over here, this is what your pie chart should look like. So you start off with your 25% slice for your apple, then you've got 5% slice for your pineapple, a 35% slice for banana, you've got your nectarines and your peaches, which are both 10%, and then your oranges, which were, which were 15%. Now, if you wanted to, you could also have chosen to do this in color, in which case it could look something like this, and you could have a key showing what each of the different uh, slices or colors represents. Also, don't forget, you have to make sure that you put your title in for the pie chart. So you can just call it favorite fruits, or you can call it favorite fruits of learners in a class or something like that. Okay, so just a title that will tell what this chart is representing or what it is showing. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at the second example for today. So in this example, you have been given a pie chart and you've been, uh, you're going to be asked questions about it. So first of all, it's important for you to read what it says over here. It says the learners in a class of 40 were asked what their favorite subjects are. Now this is important because you need to know that there are 40 learners in this class. Otherwise you won't be able to answer the questions that you're going to be asked. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few seconds for each of these questions and then we'll go through them. Okay, here's the first question. How many learners chose maths? Okay, question B. What percentage of the class chose English? Question C. What percentage of the class chose history? Question D. Which subject was chosen by the same number of learners as maths? Question E, which subject was chosen by the same number of learners as art? Question F. What percentage of the class chose English or Geography? Question G, which subject is the most popular?
And then the last question, question H, which subjects are the least popular? Okay, so let's go through all of those answers. So the first question, question A, was how many learners chose maths? So you first had to look and you had to see maths is 20%. Now remember, you needed to know that the whole class is 40 learners. Okay, so we need to work out 20% of 40 learners. Now we have already worked or learned how to work a percentage out of a certain amount. So we're going to be taking the 40 and multiplying it by 20%. So you can either multiply 40 by 20 over 100 or you can multiply 40 by 0 0.2, which is 20% written as a decimal fraction. Okay, so 40 times 20 over 100 or 40 times 0 0.2, that gives you eight learners. So there are eight learners in this class that chose maths as their favorite subject. The next question, question B, what percentage of the class chose English? Okay, so over here, English. They told us that there are six learners in the class that chose English. So we have to work out the percentage. So we're going to take the six and put it over the total, which is 40. And then we multiply that by 100 to convert it to a percentage. And that should have given you 15%. So 15% of the class chose English as their favorite subject. The next question, which percentage or what percentage of the class chose history? So the same process as we did for working out the percentage for English, we take for history, it's four learners, so it's four over the total, which is 40. We multiply that by 100, and that will give us a percentage, which is 10%. So 10% of the class chose history as their favorite subject. Question D, which subject was chosen by the same number of learners as maths? In question A, we worked out that the number of learners that chose maths was eight. So if we look at the pie chart, we can see that there's also geography that has eight learners. That means that geography and maths were chosen by the same number of learners. So geography is the other subject that was chosen by the same number of learners as maths. Question E, which subject was chosen by the same number of learners as art? Okay, so now art is 10%. We worked out a subject that was 10%. That was in question C, that was the history. We worked out that history is 10%. So they are the same amount, okay? So history is the same number of learners because it's the same percentage as art. Then question F, what percentage of the class chose English or geography? Now, if you're being asked something like this, you have to add them because if somebody chose English or geography, we have to count them. Okay, so we look at our English learners, that is six, and we look at our geography learners, that is eight. So if I take those and I add them, 6 plus 8, that will give me 14 learners that chose either English or Geography. Now that I know how many learners chose the two, either one of the two subjects, I can then work out the percentage by taking the 14, putting it over my total, which is 40, and multiplying that by 100 to get a percentage. And that should have given you 35%. So 35% of the class chose either English or Geography as their favorite subject. Then question G, which subject is the most popular? The most popular subject is the one that will have the biggest slice of your pie chart. And in that, this case, that is science, okay? Science is a 25% slice. So science is the most popular in this class. And then the last question, which subjects are the least popular? Okay, so in this case over here, if you look, this one obviously we know isn't, you can see that these ones are bigger over here. And these, these two over here, if you're not sure, remember we already worked out, this was 10%, we worked out that history was also 10%. They are the same as each other. So both of these are the least popular. So it's art and history are the least popular in this particular class. Okay, and that is how we work with pie charts. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. 
Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.